Hey guys, how you doing? Now today we're going to have a little nostalgic look back at the early days of the World Wide Web. As you may know, the World Wide Web actually celebrated a pretty monumental anniversary this month when the web turned 30 years old. So 30 years since Tim Berners-Lee, all the way back in 1989 at CERN, came up with this idea of serving information over hypertext pages on the internet, which, you know, in hindsight seems a really logical thing to do and, you know, like a no-brainer really. Really. But the thing about it is at the time, not everyone believed that the World Wide Web and the internet in general would go on to become what it's become today. Now I've been reading this book over the last couple of days called Silicon Snake Oil. Now this is by Clifford Stoll who, uh, you know, little disclaimer here, I think Clifford's a great guy. Um, he does stuff on YouTube today, lectures all around the world, he's a very knowledgeable guy. But, I mean, he's admitted since he wrote this book, and an article I think was on Wired magazine that he did around the same time, back in around 1994, where really he didn't see the future vision of what the internet would become. And this book is actually a bit of a giggle in hindsight because he got so much wrong, but also there is a bit of like, you know, foretelling in here and some stuff that is still quite relevant today, I think. But let me read you one little uh, excerpt from here that made me giggle when I was reading this last night. On page 11. He says, I don't believe that phone books, newspapers, magazines or corner video shops will disappear as computer networks spread. Nor do I think that my telephone will merge with my computer to become some sort of information appliance. Yeah. Now that kind of reads like, you know, someone, a bit like a spoof really, like someone writing intentionally the opposite of what the internet will go on to become, but it does kind of prove what an exciting uncharted world the internet and the World Wide Web, and kind of how unknown it was when it first came around. Now, I don't know if you remember your first time that you got on the, the World Wide Web. For me, it would have been probably around September 1995. I'd read about it in magazines and that over the summer holidays when I was at school, as I think 95 was really the big hype year for the web, when the mainstream media jumped on board with the information superhighway, as they often quite, you know, cringely referred to it back then. Uh, but I'd read about it in magazines, I was quite interested in it, and then I got back from my school holidays, and I noticed these four new computers that had appeared in our library at school. And they had this, uh, you know, handmade sign hanging above them that said, Internet, see librarian to book an hour. So we had these four machines that were connected to the internet, and you'd have to go to the librarian, you'd have to reserve, you know, book out a block of one hour to go on the machine, and then you'd get off and someone else would come on. I mean, as it turned out, they weren't very popular at first because no one really knew what they were, so you could book an hour and sit on there for like three or four if you wanted to. But as time went on, you know, it would be a bit more strict as more people wanted to try these machines. And I would come in with like, you know, floppy disks from home. I'd download as much as I could off the AmiNet, you know, to transfer to my Amiga 1200 at home. And I'd download entire websites and email digest newsletters. So I really got into it and I'd go on uh, chat rooms and news groups and everything. And I really found it such a fascinating place. And it really did seem magical, like, you know, it was unlimited, this world that I discovered. Now, you might be a bit like me and nostalgic for those early days of the web when, you know, every website had a, a dancing baby gif or an under construction sign. Well, it turns out if you want to get really nostalgic and revisit those days of the web, you can do it. Now, you might be familiar with a website called archive.org, and there is a little service on there that they've got called the Wayback Machine. And it's been around for years. Their mission is to archive as much as the World Wide Web as they can, dating back to as early as 1994. The thing about it is, while it's great surfing the Wayback Machine on a modern PC, it's not possible to check out the Wayback Machine using a vintage of the time machine because they inject a lot of like modern JavaScript and code into their pages. But now we've actually got this great new service that's come along in the last couple of months that I'll show you here on uh, Windows 95. You know, we've got to be period correct in Netscape Navigator. And this is called theoldnet.com. Welcome to the old internet again. Now, even looking at this page, it looks like it could have been made in like, you know, 1996 on GeoCities or something like that. It's an HTML 1.0 page. It's got all your GIFs and stuff on there. It's even got a guest book as well that you can sign. And do you remember all these little um, buttons that everyone put on their websites back then? You know, get Netscape now, made with Internet Explorer. I remember having one on one of my websites back then, you know, proudly made in Notepad. Like, you know, that was some kind of geek bragging right that I'd hand-coated my website that was pretty much, you know, a couple of GIFs and loads of text. 
and they actually pick out a few home pages from back in the day that they feature. And it shows you at the top as well, um, pages that people have recently visited, uh, the most visited sites in here as well. And what it does, it actually strips out all of the modern code that the Wayback Machine injects into these old websites and means that you can browse the old web using your vintage PC, your old Mac, your Amiga, whatever, and it will work in the web browsers of the time. So it gives you a really seamless experience. So for example here, you get a little drop down box and you can pick the year that you want to visit. So we'll go with 1996, you know, the web was kind of getting quite established by then. And let's try sega.com. And there you go, it will serve up Sega's website as it was in summer 1996. Now you remember Sega back then, the Saturn was their big console, so I mean you can look around at the news and the games they were featuring. Let's have a look what was happening in 96. Sega Central, what was that about? And not all of the formatting's working correctly. I think that might be, you know, a font issue. I've got like a few weird characters here, but for the most part, you know, all the graphics are loading. You can look back on these articles that they were talking about then. Virtua Cop 2 coming out in the Sega Saturn. What else can we look at in here? And I think a few of the, the images might not load properly on my uh, on my browser here. So we've got Sega Online. Look at that. Sonic 3D Blast on the Genesis, on the Game Gear. And looking back at this, I mean, how nostalgic is this already? What's happening in the buzz world? <laughs> and now the whole thing's served up, and you can spend ages kind of, you know, put on like your old Prodigy album or something like that and make out like it's 1996 and surf this site as it was back then. It's really interesting to get a little snapshot into history. Let's have a look at the Sega Saturn page. And they go all about the Sega Saturn, their hot new 32-bit system. Peripherals and accessories, and you can see, you know, the wheel they've got there, the extra controllers, the joystick that you can get. So already, as you can see, you know, this is a real trip down memory lane. Let's try another site. Now this video, I'm not going to do too much editing on it. I thought we'd just kick back and get our nostalgia on today a little bit. Let's try Apple.com in 1996. And I love that kind of transfer animation with the comet like flying in the background of the Netscape logo. Now this one here, it seems a few things haven't loaded properly, but you know, we can uh, go in there and look at the, the Macintosh PowerBook page on the old rainbow Apple logo. Apple introduces the new PowerBook 1400 series CD-ROM equipped notebook computers. Very advanced. And this is October 1996, a press release all about the new PowerBook laptops that they released. The pre-installed software and there we go, some specs, 117 megahertz processor in there, 16 megabytes of RAM, a six-speed C a six speed CD-ROM drive. And at this stage, it looked like Apple were still including floppy drives in their machines before they discontinued them a year or two after. So that's really cool. What else can we look at? Let's try the BBC in uh, 1996. Oh, look at this, that old BBC logo. Now, obviously, the Wayback Machine do their best to archive everything, but you know there, there will be sections of websites that don't work, or you get served errors. There we go. Let's try this programs. The Big Bite with Quentin Cooper. I think I vaguely remember that. Was that like a show about the web? Presented by Quentin Cooper, The Big Bite keeps you up to date with all the computing and digital technology news and issues. You can hear it on our audio page or by tuning into Radio 5 every Sunday evening at 8pm. Now, maybe I didn't ever hear that. Um, and obviously, you want to get your real audio software. I imagine if we click into here. Now, the archive.org often do archive even like media and stuff as well. So, um, The Big Bite in real audio. Maybe it won't work. Oh, there you go. You can actually listen to it, but it looks like I haven't got real audio installed in my uh, Windows 95 virtual machine, but that's pretty cool. I might give that a listen a bit later. Hear this uh, show from the Sunday the 19th of October 1997. I do remember watching The Net. I've talked about that before. That was a show that I watched pretty religiously on uh, on the BBC back then, all about the, the emerging internet. Maybe we can try um, Radio 1. See, it was something on Radio 1 back in... Uh, 96. Oh, look at this. Wow, that is old school. 
The Breakfast Show with Zoe Ball. Uh, Simon Mayo. Rolf Oops. <laughs> Rolf Harris appeared on the show, apparently. Uh, the All Saints. Uh, what else have we got in here? I remember listening to like you know Judge Jules and Pete Tong and Danny Rampling and shows like that. The reception area. Here we go on air. Yeah, selection of uh, some of the shows. Danny Rampling. There you go. The Love Groove Dance Party. Used to love that show. You can even get track listings from you know what he was playing then in October 1997. Yeah, I do remember back then it was, uh, you wouldn't get much in the way of graphics and that even on websites back then. It was literally used for information, really. Um, not too glossy. That's pretty cool, though. Let's go back. What else can we check out? What about Nintendo.com? See what they were doing in 96. Nintendo Power Source. Go into there. Oh, look, it's got frames. Very advanced. The search for the Nintendo 64. There are people out there searching for Nintendo 64 systems. We don't sell directly, but we're shipping to more retailers. Yeah, I do remember there was a bit of a shortage. The N64 took a long time to appear, didn't it, on the market? There's a nationwide rush to get a Nintendo 64 for the holiday season. It's caught us a little off guard. That's Nintendo story to this day, isn't it? And uh, you've got this kind of frames at the top here as well. The Loud House, I'm not sure what that is. That looks like a, either a forum or a, a newsletter or something like that, maybe. We go back. The elevator. Not the same thing. There's a report there from a show. It's something you don't see anymore, isn't it? Websites with frames. It looks a pretty decent site, actually, for 96. And we've got news, we've got articles there as well that you can read. Want to see interviews with Nintendo figures? There you go, so much on here. Yeah, they've archived a lot of that. Another website I do recall around then as well when the N64 was coming out, I think it was N64.com. I do remember that being like a fan website, I think, wasn't it? There we go. Yeah, and you don't get that anymore with websites. You know, when you go on Twitter, people kind of summarizing the latest updates that they've done. So you knew uh, which sections of the website to go to for new bits. Another Frames website. I do remember as well, some people got really, you know, they hated on Frames. I remember like some campaigns like, you know, and people proudly boasting my website's Frames free because people thought it was like, you know, unnecessary bloat. <laughs> they could see the internet in uh, 2019, I think they'd have a, a heart attack, wouldn't they? Oh, Doom 64. I was playing that recently, actually, really good version. And you can spend hours looking through all this stuff. What else can we check out? Let's go back. Um, recently, uh, Google.com. That'll be interesting to look at. When it was still a uh, yeah prototype, the Google search engine prototype. There we go. Do you remember when Google looked like that? Unfortunately, not showing the old logo. Maybe the other link will will show it. Yeah, there you go. I mean, in hindsight, the Google logo hasn't changed all that much. You know, a bit of a different font now. And yeah, when it was still at Stanford, wasn't it? And about Google. Look at that. All the early information from Sergio Larry Page from 1998. Index contains 25 million pages. Soon to be much bigger. <laughs> yeah, that was a understatement of the millennium, that wasn't it? That wasn't the website I used for search back then. I used to use um, altavista.com. That was my search engine of choice in 96. There you go, look at that. That brings back some memories. Now, I doubt that will work. Did you find any of my uh, cringeworthy old articles, maybe? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're not going to archive the entire search engine, but. It's pretty cool to see it again. Yahoo.com as well. I think Yahoo was probably, maybe if not the first, one of the very first websites I went on. So I was asking, like, you know, the kid next to me at school, how do you find stuff on this thing? And he told me about Yahoo. Yeah, and do you remember it was all categories back then, wasn't it? Yeah, and you go into, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, computers. So you go in there. I remember trying to find, like, Amiga pages and that kind of thing, or magazines. And there you go. God, this takes me back. <laughs>
Yeah, and all the magazines are listed and stuff like... What's your bike magazine? That was a big magazine in America back then. There you go, takes your bike magazine from 96. So you know, you can actually like use this and kind of follow link to link and... Archive.org have got a lot of stuff saved, so I mean, you know, a lot of this stuff is working. It's really cool. What else can we look at? Here's one that just sprung to mind. We need to go a little bit later on for this one. Do you remember Boo.com? Maybe we go to 2001. I was actually reading um, a book all about Boo.com, one of the most infamous .com disasters. If you haven't read it, actually, I'll link up the book in the show notes um, in the video description. Really good read, actually. And, you know, it was an interesting website, see how much um, archive.org have got of it. There you go, Boo.com. It was, I mean, they were a fashion retailer in London. There was a documentary that uh, I think the BBC made about them. And, you know, that they had spent so much money trying to get this website that really, I mean, it had all this flashy kind of animations and stuff and these characters that back then when people were on, like, you know, maximum 56k dial-up, really, it just couldn't handle it. And, you know, the website went, you know, crashed every other day and they went spectacularly bust, as many of the companies did in the uh, dot-com crash. But yeah, and it's really cool that you can go and, uh, you know, check out these websites as they were using a web browser of the time on an operating system of the era. So, you know, like I said, not everything's going to work, but you can, you know, get the gist of it. So, I mean, I could sit here and I probably will now for the next few hours checking out old websites from back in the day. But I found that the other week. I thought it was really cool and I thought you guys might get some enjoyment out of it as well. So it is theoldnet.com. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.